my brief is uh, slightly tweaked i am going to speak only on closed k wiring of phalangeal fractures the tips and tricks for the best outcome and least uh, complications uh, as you all know proximal phalanx is very closely related to the flexor tendons the neurovascular bundle and it is surrounded by the extensor apparatus in its proximal two thirds therefore there is a need for anatomical reduction in every uh, case of hand but more so in the proximal phalanx because as you can see that the flexor and extensor tendons are very closely linked to the proximal phalanx a slight uh, disparity in the flexor tendon sheath can cause adhesions at focal points and uh, can lead to a compromise outcomes so anatomical reduction is very essential transverse fractures of the proximal phalanx are uh, always have a volar apex angulation and this leads to flexor tendon adhesions and pip joint uh, flexion contractures if left untreated or if the anatomy of the proximal phalanx is not restored in the uh, by the word anatomy i mean that if you don't restore the volar concavity and the dorsal convexity there will be problems as i will show you in a short while so the goals of treatment in transverse or short oblique fractures of the proximal phalanx are anatomic reduction stable fixation the approach or the method should be tendon sparing and joint sparing and we require early mobilization to get the best results so i will be concentrating on anti grade intramural fixation of fractures of the proximal phalanx especially uh, as an index case i will consider fracture of the distal shaft of the proximal phalanx to show you the tips and tricks of this method this is the index case which presented 10 days after injury and the uh, deformity as you can see is about 90 degrees of angulation here so what it requires is a careful study of the x ray you can see that the, there is a cross hitch here so if we can get a close reduction with patience and sustained traction i think uh, we could uh, do a very good anti grade intramural nailing in this case so this is the close up of the same uh, patient the fracture is of the distal shaft is a transverse fracture what we note in the x ray is a very thick intact volar cortex and this is very important if we have to uh, get success with this anti grade intramural nailing technique because it's basically a three point fixation and uh, basically as i'll show you later the two points of the fixation have to be on the proximal fragment and only the third point has to be in the distal fragment i take a liberal incision to identify the extensor tendon over the proximal phalanx i split the extensor tendon in the midline like this it does not cause any problem though i have said it's a tendon sparing approach this is a minimally invasive approach because anywhere you have to go uh, you have to uh, go through the extensor tendon and this is the best way as referred in this paper also that insertion of the pin in the dorsal midline is probably the safest thing to do in a proximal phalanx so the bone entry uh, is i uh, i prefer to use a thick k wire you can use a small owl also it's about 5 mm distal to the mp joint line and these are the few steps here uh, we see that the fracture is uh, having a criss cross pattern uh, so that it can be hitched properly and what we do is give traction correct the angulation try to reduce the fracture this is fracture is nearly reduced but it cannot be held uh, unless a wire is inserted so these are the steps this is a location of the entry hole with a small k wire the hole is increased to about to with a 2.5 mm wire the wire is pre bent and you seek the intramural uh, volar cortex with this wire and then once you remember that we should not use more than 1 mm wire ideally multiple k wire should be inserted but 0.8 mm wires the wire is inserted from the entry hole this is the first uh, hold this is the second uh, grip on the intact volar cortex if this intact volar cortex is not there this method will fail now because of the curve the wire would naturally penetrate out from here from the dorsum so at this point at the fracture site under a cm one should stop and
and turn the wire in such a way that after the reduction the wire goes on to the bowler side because if the wire continues to go in the same line of the curve it will uh, come out of the fracture site so you can see that the wire has gone into the uh, nearly into the subchondral area and this can be followed up by inserting multiple wires these are all 0.8 mm wires you have to use a t handle it cannot be inserted with the hand because the intramedullary canal of the proximal phalanx is quite narrow and 1 mm wire would give too much of temp temper so 0.8 mm wires are uh, required the wires are bent uh, and cut here so that they are blunted here this is the pre operative picture for comparison you can see a very good reduction and especially a good reduction of the volar cortex and as i have said that is very important not more than 1 mm wires ideally 0.8 these are pre bent blunt wires i like to retract my extensor tendon with blunt skin hooks like this i use a small t handle on a chuck this is the index uh, this is a paper which i referred to uh, by gonzales and all and this also recommends the use of 0.8 mm pre bent nails this is the paper i had written in 2008 uh, a series of about 43 cases and very important now step is to cut the wires as close to as close to the bone as possible if the wires are cut as close to the bone as possible there is really no need to remove them use a very sharp cutter like this and the tendon is sutured with inverted knots here and we go back to this index case and that is the result at 3 years post op you can see that all the anatomical parameters are satisfied the dorsal convexity volar concavity is met and that's the result you can see the scar is healed beautifully there is no extensor lag and there is full flexion this method is actually most ideal if the fracture is more distal and but one thing is very important is to on the x ray you ensure take multiple views ensure that there is no intraarticular extension and that is the result at 2 years post op the same technique has been used and that is the result here this is the clinical picture now it is very important how much or uh, uh, where is what is the limit what is the limit uh, at which you cannot do this method i would say if there is a this method totally depends on an intact volar cortex so you can definitely do at the fractures of the neck fracture of the distal shaft and this part is dicey the mid shaft fractures are dicey if the fracture is here at this place you get a intact cortex here for the second point of fixation in this three point fixation method and you can do it but if the ex fracture extends proximally you cannot do it and this method will fail or it causes angulation especially if you use multiple wires then probably as a compromise you have to use a single wire this is a case which was erroneously treated by this method you can see this is not the method of treatment somebody had opened it and still not got a good reduction or i would say this is not acceptable at all and so this k wire previous k wire was removed and you can see that in this case also the two points of fixation are in the proximal uh, fragment and only one point of fixation in the distal fragment so this method will succeed because and already what is more important is that you have to uh, think of the length of the proximal phalanx also a middle finger proximal phalanx is very long here in the little finger the proximal phalanx is very short so use multiple or i would say less number of wires but definitely 0.8 mm only and this patient because of the previous surgery started developing flexion contractures and this was treated with this capnus splint and that is the result some extensor lag still persists attributed to the previous surgery now when the fracture is slightly more proximal and if this method is followed you can see that the k wires having uh, their own temper will push the bone and deform the fracture site so this method is not really ideal anti grade method is not ideal for these cases so what is the method for these cases uh, uh, when this fracture is proximal to the mid shaft you have to i like to do a retrograde intramedullary wiring like this again we make a hole with a 1.5 mm or 2 mm wire here at this junction here as shown and insert multiple wires remember one thing when you when we do a retract retrograde wiring there is more space on the volar aspect of the proximal phalanx 
so the wires have to be inserted from the distal end and curved in such a way that they go into the volar cord volar area of the proximal phalanx proximally and that is the result at two years post op now this was another case very interesting there is a comminution in the proximal half so even if i want to do a retrograde wiring here i cannot insert this wire in such a way that it goes into this cortex so here knowing this volar obliquity or obliquity on this side i have to use a wire in such a way from this side so that when the wire abuts against this cortex a retrograde wire it will push this bone on the medial side and get a reduction like so a single wire was inserted most important picture in this is this where the wire has gone exactly into the uh, radial aspect of the volar cortex and in the lateral view you can see that the con concavity is restored and the wire is gone on the volar side here this uh, in this method the wire is inserted very close to the joint so we expect some sort of stiffness till the wire is there but the fixation is very stable and you assisted uh, mobilization is done the fracture unites reasonably well and in time and this k wire has to be removed you can see that the extensor lag persists till the k wire is removed and at one year post op there is no extensor lag a wire removal has been done and the fracture is completely healed this method for want of time i would not i would stop here but we used the same method to extrapolate and published a paper on the use of anti grade wiring for middle phalanx shaft fractures in 2014 also i thank you all for your attention rohan yeah thank you sir <clears throat> for the very nice and informative talk there is one question from uh, dr bipin is asking how do you decide the center of the shaft for introduction of the k wire wires uh, use of a cm uh, uh, is very, very important you take a cm and uh, put a small k wire there and uh, check uh, with a ap and lateral view to know the center the entry must be at least 5 mm distal to the mp joint uh, line okay sir how is your experience in oblique fractures oblique shaft fractures With oblique shaft fracture should not be treated by this method a short oblique you can get away if it is the if the length of the proximal phalanx is long but a shorter uh, proximal phalanx like a little finger the fracture will deform if you use a intramedullary wiring so it is better to use uh i am not very confident of uh, doing a closed k wiring for oblique fractures i i want my reduction to be perfect i prefer to open it and put interfrax screws okay sir how how do you uh, prevent distraction at the fracture site in which method same method in this anti grade wiring yes uh actually there is no reason to have a distraction what we can do is stop short of the distal end or stop short of pushing the wire uh, completely and then press manually with the hand over the uh, flex pip joint the fracture will collapse oh. <clears throat> all right okay thank you